Hey, we haven't done a video like this in a while. How about loading up some 224 Valkyrie? And tonight we're gonna throw the 95 grain Sierra Match King in there. Don't mind my dog trying to inhale her food. Goober. Uh, the brass we're gonna be using is actually Federal Brass. This is uh, some stuff that I got from some factory loaded ammunition. The primers I'll be using are AR Match Small Rifle Primers. And then we're going to be using Reloader 17. If you're wondering what's up with the duct tape, I had a fiasco go on with some other reloading and accidentally put a little bit of H4350 on top. So I cut the bottle in half so I could take that out and uh, it's all Reloader 17 again. Got my current, this is all the 224 Valkyrie I have loaded right now. These are 53 grain VMAX and I'm actually going to get into a varmint series here very quickly. So uh, stay tuned for that if that's something you're interested in. If you want to see how these perform on varmints, I actually have a video on that uh, where I went up to Wyoming and killed some varmints with them. It is extremely graphic, you have been warned. But let's get to loading these up. So I think I'm going to call it good with 30 pieces tonight. Uh, I've got my brass fully prepped already. It's been trimmed, deburred, and uh, primer's all cleaned. It's been ultrasonic cleaned and then tumbled to dry it and polish it. So. Why don't we get our primers out and then we'll start priming up our brass. If you've never seen Federal Premium AR match primers, they can be identified by this color combo. Looks like the uh, little paper stuff down in there is yellow and then the anvil itself is coated green. So they're green and yellow. Also on the back side, they're pretty easy to identify because they're really the only ones with like a little watermark. They say AR on them. So if you see a primer that says AR on the back, they will be Federal Premium AR small rifle match primers. I still prime off of the press because I'm still too cheap to go buy me a uh, little handheld primer. I'll probably change that very soon, actually. And that's what happens when you use the wrong shell holder. Neat, huh? Well, hey, that was cool, right? All right, let's throw this brass back in here. Got the shell holder that has a V on it for Valkyrie. Um, if you guys don't know, my rifle is a 224 Valkyrie. It is a bolt-action AR-15 upper. It's kind of funny. I've seen a debate start going around about, like, is a 224 Valkyrie any good in a bolt action, or is it strictly a gas gun caliber? Well, I've got a bolt action AR-15, so I think it's kind of the best of both worlds. I don't have to worry about pressure issues. I can download them if I would like for a really light recoiling rounds or little varmint rounds. I don't have to worry about cycling the action on it, so I think it's pretty cool. Or I can run them pretty hard as well. I can run it suppressed, unsuppressed, muzzle brake, whatever I want to do and it's just going to feed just like a bolt action would. So I get all the benefits of that. Um, I don't get the speed of a gas gun, but I prefer to shoot long range, and usually I'm not doing like really fast follow-up shots on long range shooting. Um, so those are my two, those are my thoughts about that. Uh, I'm going to load these up, and I, I think I'm going to go film just kind of a cool video where I kind of hike up the hills and maybe get like a steep incline shot on some targets, and uh, kind of have fun with that one. It's going to be less talking about the details and whatnot. I'm just out having fun with the cartridge. So I really haven't had a whole lot of opportunity to take this out and just enjoy it yet. Um, I've been waiting on getting a few things for the Valkyrie uh, put together, some reloading components. Like I still need to buy brass. I want to get a hundred pieces. I'm probably going to go with Starline, but I think I'm going to wait just a little bit longer to where I can get some Black Friday deals. So just going to continue priming all these and then we'll talk to you guys in a second when we start throwing powder charges. Not sure if I've ever specifically showed you guys this setup that I use. I've got this little digital scale. Since I bought this thing, I've never replaced the batteries on it. It still reads just fine. I'm really enjoying it. I can plug this into a wall if I need to, but I'm pretty sure I've lost that cord by now. As well as uh, I've got my little Hornady trickler and it's sitting on top of a box of bullets. And let me show you why. That's because if I set it down here, once I put the tray on here, it's not high enough, then it can't reach in there. So a box of Sierra bullets works just perfectly. Almost dumped all my Reloader 17 right there. That was cool. Um, and that works just perfectly to trickle a couple grains out at a time. For these purposes, we're just gonna go with the 26 grains of Reloader 17. Uh, I didn't have to trickle that one up. It came right out of my uh, little powder thrower just right. So let's fill up these little tiny cases with some Reloader 17. I do use my little Lee Perfect Powder Measure, which is by no means perfect. It's usually plus or minus a tenth to two tenths, so you got kind of a 0.3 grain swing there. 
but not a big deal. Um, typically I'll set it up to throw just a touch low and then I'll trickle up that last tenth of a grain. On the little RCBS funnel here, it's got the multiple little steps for different types of cases and uh, sizes of the case mounts. Um, I don't know if I'll be able to hold my phone and do this at the same time without spilling powder everywhere. I have figured it out. Let's give you guys some better lighting. So here we go. Was that everything you imagined? Me too. I always set my funnel on the next piece of brass and then I reweigh the next powder charge. It's always hard to uh, give you guys a good idea of case fill level, but pretty much from what I'm seeing, the powder is basically at the base of the shoulder, but this is a long bullet and it's actually going to sit down in there quite a ways. It'll probably sit right around there. So I'm actually just going for overall length, so I'm not even gonna use my uh, comparator tool on this because it needs to fit within my magazine. So we're gonna go to 2.260, maybe just like one or two thousandths over that because my magazine will allow me that. It's not a mag pull, it's actually a metal magazine. Let me get this little priming arm out of my way. Doing all this one-handed. Maybe just to prove that I could reload one-handed if I need to. All right, my guy's in there straight enough. We're gonna see where this thing's set up at. I'm hoping it puts it kind of dead on. So we'll creep up on it. Nice and smooth. We're not at the bottom of the stroke yet. I'm gonna rotate this just a bit. Trick I learned from Gianni G. If you guys haven't checked out his channel, man, that dude does some awesome reloading. So. This bullet seeder just mars the crap out of these 95 grains for some reason. So I'm probably distorting the BC and all sorts of craziness with that. But you know what? They still shot pretty decent. So let me measure this and then I'll let you know what it is. So when seeding bullets, if you can choose to seat long or short first, always choose to seat long because now I can creep up and hit that 2.260. So these are 20 thousandths long. I'm going to stand this guy up so it doesn't go rolling off my bench. And for 20 thousandths, I'm not real familiar with the uh, reading dies yet, so we'll give it just like that much and see what happens. 2.262, and I think that's exactly what it was loaded to the original time, so we'll just go with that. Uh, obviously the little hollow points will give me just slight variation, but man, uh, Sierra really closes up these little hollow points here. Super fine me plat on those, little tiny hollow point, long boat tail. Uh, pretty long bearing surface in the bore, but really long sleek bullets. 95 grain is a whole lot to be shoving through a little 22 caliber bore. Uh, so I'm going to continue seeding these. So I know that there are basically three causes as to why these bullets are getting deformed. Number one, the uh, taper inside the seeding die just isn't lining up correctly with uh, the taper of this bullet. Obviously this is set up for like a shorter rounder nose bullet than this long sleek ogive. So if anybody knows how I can kind of modify that to make it work better, let me know. Uh, I don't know if you put like lapping compound on a bullet and then just like go to town on your uh, seating die or what. I've seen JRB do something like that. Um, second would be compressed charge. There's quite a bit of force going on in here. Um, so that's also something to consider. And finally, the reason I think that they have uh, a little bit more bullet damage than typical uh, because it's not really re leaving a ring, like it's smashing the nose of this thing, is neck tension. So another thing I'm going to do to alleviate some of that is actually get an expanding mandrel for these. Uh, I don't know if I like where this Redding's uh, neck tension is actually set up. Let's, let's look at that real quick. So I'll take a piece of brass, it's loaded up with some powder. Oh no, I just dumped Reloader 17 out. So we'll grab the next piece of brass with some Reloader 17 in it. Um, we'll measure the neck beforehand. This is how you measure neck tension. Um, spin it around a little bit. 248. So you know what makes this really easy is if you zero it out on 248. Spin it around, make sure it stays on zero. And we'll take one. Uh, low key, I'm super bummed that I just dumped that piece of brass and powder in it. I think that's actually the first time I've done that. So at least I got that on film. If you're going to mess up, get it on film. Like, I rode BMX bikes and made bike videos. If you're going to crash, film it. Uh, that's kind of the rule of thumb there. So we'll do that. We'll spin it around and then finish seating this guy out. Nice firm press at the bottom once it stops moving. Now let's slip that in there. So this has 
two and a half, three thousandths of neck tension. And the neck expanding mandrels get that down to like one thousandth, which is pretty light, but I'm running it in a bolt action. So if I was running this in an AR, I would stick with the three thousandths mark. Um, because it's going to slam that round home, and with a heavy bullet like this, you don't want the momentum of the bullet to pull it out of the case and like force it into your lands or anything crazy like that. So with bolt action, I can be pretty delicate with it if I would like to be. Um, I'll never be as vicious as a gas gun is on it. So let's measure this one's neck tension. Yeah, two and a half. So. I think those are the three reasons why I'm just smashing the crap out of the noses of the bullets. So not only did I drop that piece of brass, but when I picked it up, I looked inside of there, and there is not one grain of powder left in this thing. Nothing came out. So it's almost kind of amazing that uh, it was able to dump all of that powder out so quickly. It just fell and was like, <sighs> empty. So there goes that 26 grains of Reloader 17. Guess I get to weigh that charge again. So as I seated this bullet, I mean, I was paying attention to where the pressure curve was, and really, like, it feels like a lot of pressure as soon as this bullet starts to force its way into the case. So I think that's really where they're getting distorted the most, is how much pressure there is at the neck tension, combined with the shape of the seating die. Um, obviously, the more force you put on a misshaped seating die, it's going to really put a ring on that thing. Uh, so before I'm even compressing the charge, it's really feeling like more pressure than I would expect for a little 22 caliber. There you go guys, you're basically getting a uh, first glimpse into what the ammunition will be for this little video that I want to go make. Like I say, it's going to just kind of be for fun, kind of cinematic, less uh, details like this video is. So if you enjoy the details, here's this video for you. But if you just want to see some kind of action and fun long range shooting, that's what the next one's going to be all about. So I appreciate your time, look forward to that video, it should be out in a few more weeks hopefully, and we will talk to you guys later.